Hey everyone, Carl here with Trial Byte Studios, and I just wanted to let you know that there isn't going to be any fun introduction to this video. This is a terrifying cryptid and a terrifying story. If you have children watching with you or are faint of heart, I recommend you turn off the video now. For everyone else, I recommend you wait until it's dark, walk outside, find a safe, quiet area to sit, listen to the sounds of the night, and enjoy the video. The scarometer is going to a 9 this week. Be warned. The town of Falk is located along the southwestern border of Arkansas, close to both Louisiana and Texas. Since the mid-19th century, people in and around the little town of Falk have claimed to be witness to a monster. The monster is described as a large, hairy, bipedal ape, standing anywhere from 9 to 15 feet tall. Descriptions of the Falk monster make it sound akin to the most famous North American cryptid, the Sasquatch. Sasquatch, Swamp Ape, Bigfoot, Wild Man. These are just a few of the names given to this famous cryptid, first witnessed by native peoples in North America long before European discovery and colonization. The Sasquatch was described by native peoples as a tribe of wild men who were shy and kept to themselves, yet had ferocious tempers when angered or threatened. Sasquatch were even revered as spiritual animals, and sometimes considered to be a deity in native folklore. Sasquatch in the modern era has become something of a pop culture icon. Thousands of TV shows, documentaries, and works of fiction enshrine the Sasquatch as a legend and elevate it to a creature yet unknown to science. Modern sightings and encounters with the Sasquatch do not differ too much from the earliest. That brings us back to Falk, because the description of a Sasquatch fits the creature known as the Falk monster perfectly. The monster is said to live in and around the area known as Boggy Creek, a long, meandering creek that winds and trickles its way through the Falk countryside. During the day, you could not find a more scenic piece of American countryside. Tall trees, rolling hills, and of course, Boggy Creek cutting its way through the middle. But at night, when the shadows grow long and the trees become an entanglement of branches and roots, the scenic countryside turns into a nightmarish landscape, stalked by the monster. Early encounters with the monster were mostly peaceful. Residents simply described what they believed to be a large, hairy man, eyeballing them from the trees. However, panic and turmoil soon enveloped Falk, as stories from credible witnesses spread from door to door like a plague. In the excitement, the people of Falk organized a hunting party to track down and kill the beast. They brought in professional men and trained dogs, but to no avail. The dogs refused to track the monster, and the men, try as they might, could not encounter the creature. This hunting effort by the people of Falk seemed to have an abject effect on the monster, because, after this day, the monster became violent. It was on May 2nd, 1971, when the creature truly made its presence known to the inhabitants of Falk. Late in the night, Mr. and Mrs. Ford were relaxing when they heard a sound from outside their home. The Fords lived on the outskirts of Falk, near Boggy Creek, and had only recently moved into this home. Thinking nothing of the sound, they continued to enjoy their evening. Mr. Ford decided to go to bed. Mrs. Ford, however, decided to stay up a little longer. Slowly, she began to doze off, finally falling asleep on the family's couch. Unbeknownst to Mrs. Ford, the monster had been watching. As Mrs. Ford slept, a shadow extended from an open screen window near the couch. The shadow turned into a huge black hand as it came into the light. Outstretched, the shadow reached for Mrs. Ford. Suddenly, Mrs. Ford woke with a start. The hand withdrew and she screamed in terror, catching only a glimpse of the monster that she initially believed to be a bear. Mr. Ford rushed out of the bedroom to see what was the matter and spotted the creature. Slamming the window shut, Mr. Ford called out to his brother Don. Enraged, the creature went into a frenzy, the full force of the monster's fury coming to bear on the Ford's house, tearing into the home siding and smashing the window. Mr. Ford and his brother Don grabbed their rifles and fired at the monster, hitting it several times. Howling in pain, the monster relented its assault on the residents and staggered off into the night. More terrifying encounters with the creature occurred after this. A local farmer described an incident when two of his prized hogs were killed and left to rot. The farmer normally wouldn't have thought much of the incident, but what made it curious 
is that both of the 200 pound hogs were lifted over the pin's fence. The fence had no visible damage, and the hogs were laid dead just outside the fence's perimeter. Not wanting the stench of the dead hogs to attract more predators to his property, the farmer drugged the dead hogs far away and left them. Returning only a day later, the farmer was shocked to find that both the hogs had been carried away, and there was no trace of them to be found. It seemed there would be no end to the monster's assault on the people of Falk. They had enraged the beast, and now they would pay dearly. More encounters with it led to more panic, more stories, and more people out for the blood of the monster. Then, as suddenly as it appeared, it disappeared. Sightings halted by late 1974, and it seemed that the beast had learned its lesson, making its way back into the groves of Boggy Creek. What had all the inhabitants of Falk seen? It seems unlikely that so many people would be involved in an elaborate hoax. So what was it? What was attacking their town? It wasn't until 1978, when a set of mysterious three-toed tracks were found by local boys near the creek bed, that the beast, once again, became a subject of interest. The monster had indeed returned, and it once again went on a killing spree, slaughtering countless numbers of livestock within weeks of the track's discovery. The people of Falk once again were able to drive off the murderous beast, and this time, it seemed for good. Sightings of the monster became sporadic after the last resurgence in 1978. It seemed as though the monster had finally given up its attack on the town of Falk. Or did it? In the 1990s, people once again claimed to see the Falk monster. This time, however, the monster remained mostly peaceful. If you were to visit Falk today, you wouldn't hear too much about the monster. It seems to have mostly faded from popular memory. The people of Falk have continued to live their lives and moved on. However, if you talk to the old folks in Falk, you'd be witness to a different tale. A tale of death and tragedy. A tale of legend. And above all, a tale of horror. Those old folks might even advise you to stay out of Boggy Creek, no matter how good the fishing is claimed to be. Not heeding their advice, you may go down to Boggy Creek, explore it, and look for the monster yourself. You might even laugh at them while you're down there, forgetting all your worries. You let time slip by and the day wears on while you explore. But as the shadows grow long, and the bright sunny creek turns into a dark desolate swamp, you get an odd feeling. It feels like you're being watched. All the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, and every fiber of your being is screaming at you to leave this horrid place. But it's too late. Night has fallen on Boggy Creek.